The Commonwealth Bank is celebrating Build to Rent. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because I received a media release from the CBA today. And here it is. CBA provides first Build to Rent green loan in Australia. And I thought, okay, well, you know, they want to get a bit of a spin on their green loan. But Build to Rent, isn't that everything in Australia? Everything is pretty much Build to Rent. Sure, it's sold to a private individual, but then they rent it out to mitigate their taxes. You know, negative gear it. That's the Australian way. And, well, no, that's not what Build to Rent means in this consideration. Let's bring up the definition here from the U.S. Build to Rent refers to the emerging sub-market in private rented residential stock in the United Kingdom, designed specifically for renting rather than for sale, typically owned by institutional investors and managed by specialist operators. Okay, I confused. This is from the UK, but the same thing's been happening in the US for a long time. And now it's starting to happen more and more here in Australia. And, I mean, we... There's been a point, a little point of difference here when they're talking about the amount of debt that people hold in property. Here in Australia, it's not so much institutions buying up all the housing, or at least it wasn't. It's individuals, mum and dads, smaller middle-class Australians are the ones that are fueling this property bubble. This may start to change. So the Indy Sydney City will be a five-star green star building that will be carbon neutral in operations. Now, with this, whenever they tell you the five-star stuff, there's actually two ratings for the green star. There's the design rating, the one that they actually put on paper. Then there's the one they actually get in operation and reality. They can be different. So it can be five-star designed, but it may never actually achieve the five-star operational rating. Or they'll only pay for the first rating and ignore the other one because they've got the marketing spiel. So, yeah. And anyway, Commonwealth Bank and Oxford Properties Group have signed Australia's first build-to-rent green loan to support the development of uh, Sydney City. The Australian $130 million green loan will contribute to the construction of one of Australia's most sustainable high-rise residential buildings and Sydney CBD's first buy-to-rent development. Now, I mean, there you go. Now, who are Oxford Group, everyone? Well, let's bring up their org insert. They're a multinational corporation. It's a Canadian multinational corporation with operations in real estate investing, development, property management, and a portfolio of offices and real estate. So there you have it, a multinational build to rent right here in Australia. But residential, not hotels, not commercial. So it's starting to, we're starting to see a shift, everyone. Oxford Property Group is a leading global real estate investor, asset manager, and commercial developer. And it's the owner of Indy uh, Sydney City, delivering and managed by Indy. The development will be a five-star green star building, will be carbon neutral in operation, and the first to achieve a neighbor's energy rating for build to rent. To qualify for the green loan, Oxford and Indy's owner invest a corporation on a green financing framework which articulates the use and management of pros, uh, proceeds with borrowings transparently earmarked for eligible green assets. The framework was developed in line with the green loan uh, principles, accepted as one of the main guidelines for the issuance of green loans globally. All, I mean, that's all very exciting. Let's have a look here what they're talking about. The key sustainable initiatives, regenerative, regenerative lifts uh, <laughs> that capture heat energy generated by elevators. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's pretty standard. High-efficient central cooling systems. Yeah, that, that's pretty standard. I mean, see, this is the thing. People will put this stuff in their buildings without all the green hoo-ha. Well, they'll, they'll, don't get me wrong. They will use the green hoo-ha for propaganda purposes and for marketing to the ends of the earth. But regenerative lives, they're going to save people money. High-efficiency central cooling will save people money. Provisions of water, sorry, energy and water-efficient appliances. That's just all, that's standard uh, building code now. Submarine metering for improved tracking of operational performance. That's just going to save the money. It means they can charge all the individual tenants more. I wonder if if the they're going to sell the entire you know services infrastructure in this building. Often they'll have another provider that will provide the power and the data and the internet to all the people buying in these things, and they have to pay a premium. They'll sell that off to another another mob, and they'll install it all. But we'll see. It may not happen here. 
The one thirty, uh, one sorry, two thirty four. So you're competing with another two hundred and thirty three people whenever you buy an apartment here to sell or rent out. Oh wait, no, sorry, you can't buy. No, 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 you're just going to rent forever. Build to rent development will offer a range of one, two, and three bed apartments and provide an extensive offering of shared residential amenities and services. So they won't have to, or maybe they will, still sell out the services infrastructure in here to to uh, pass those costs on to others. Maybe they will. So what else? In- India, Sydney City is a wonderful example of the development and operation of an energy-efficient, low-carbon community in action, she explained. We'll have to see it if it actually happens. I mean, there we go. I mean, they can make all these claims, but... Until they actually build it and operate it, we'll have to see what happens. So let's let's have a bit of a talk about this one, everyone. Well, here's the thing to consider, guys. I mean, good on them for building a sustainable development. Good on them for getting for the Green Star rating. But, I mean, just here we have to see. Build to rent, institutional money coming into the property sector here in Australia. What can that do for property here? I'm sure it will, it will mean uh, no no chance of a, a bubble being corrected as much as people anticipate if you've got money underpinning it. Or maybe it could bring it all down if it gets into trouble. Or n- maybe now we'll have another another set of groups lobbying for government intervention to maintain the status quo and to keep property going. I don't know. I mean, th- these buildings are not going to be cheap. To live in them is not going to be cheap. It's not going to be cost-effective. All of the building a green star building is about twenty to thirty percent more expensive than a normal building, and you've got to look at all the embodied energy costs and the time frames to pay that off for the lifespan of the building. I'm sure they're accounting for all of that, and they'll have to offset it. But still, institutional money is coming to Australian property. Everyone, thanks for watching. Now, here's another video you should have a look. This is on my other channel, Heiser Says Live, which was Heiser Says US. I may have to change it back, to be honest. This one is about tech firms buying property, buying housing for their staff. Have a look. We'll see if it could come to Australia. It's affecting the market. Take care. I'll see you all later.